I've been in some parishes where parishioners have asked to have a vigil of prayer on the night that the gay Mardi Gras is on, either to pray for rain or to protest against it. It's always struck me as odd that this is the one event which people of faith seem to get quite worked up about. Yes, there is a sense of exhibitionism and of a flaunting of sexuality disconnected from relationships which is not in keeping with our Catholic view of sexuality as sacred. But this is also true in pretty much every music video, in every nightclub, and increasingly on TV shows like The Bachelor. Yet no one's ever asked to have a prayer vigil on the night that Married at First Sight is on. Christians, and we Catholics in particular, seem to have zeroed in on the LGBT community, that is the wider gay community, as some kind of threat. And in doing so, we've made ourselves into each other's enemies. And sadly, the recent clashes around Cardinal Pell's funeral have highlighted the level of animosity there is. And I don't think it's right to protest at a funeral in under any circumstance. Jesus has advice in the Gospel, which we'll hear next week, about how we are to treat our enemies. He says we are simply to love them, to pray for them. And in this week's Gospel, we hear Jesus tell us that if we have something against our brother or sister, then we are to go and reconcile with them before we come to the altar. Jesus is showing the connection between our love of God and of our neighbour. Well, later this month, an event called World Pride is taking place in Sydney. It's an international LGBT event coinciding with the Mardi Gras. So how will we as Catholics respond to this? We can try to ignore it, which will be hard because it's going to be one of the biggest events in Sydney since the Olympics. We can rail against it, which I'm sure some people will do. Or we can try to understand it. We try to understand it by understanding them, by looking not to an event or to actions or issues, but to people. So much of Jesus' mission was about breaking down barriers and bringing people together. We see Jesus breaking down the cultural norms between Jews, Gentiles and Samaritans. We see him breaking down the distinction between those who are considered holy and those who are considered unholy and sinful. Jesus changed us and them into us. So how might we, for our part, break down the barrier between the church and the LGBT community? What part can we play in reconciling? Jesuit priest Father James Martin suggests we build a bridge of dialogue, which simply means to talk and to listen. To take an interest in another person because they are a person made in the image of God, and we want them to know they are loved by God. James Martin stresses that to have dialogue with someone doesn't mean we endorse or condone everything they do. That, of course, is true in our own personal relationships. We can love somebody even though we don't agree with everything they do. It's also true as a church. We, through the Vatican, have diplomatic relationships with many nations, yet we don't necessarily endorse or support everything that nation or its government says or does. Bishop Anthony recently hosted a very successful business leaders breakfast, and yet we don't condone and support everything every business does. We can love people who we have a difference with. Indeed, this is the thing Jesus commands us to do again and again. How do we be reconciled with people of the LGBT community? Well, perhaps as we observe what might be glitz and glamour of the Mardi Gras and related events, we could take a stance of humility to be a humble church, and to look at each person and just wonder, wonder what is life like for them? What has their journey been? For a person to identify as a member of the LGBT community is for many people a difficult, uh, a difficult process filled with a fear of rejection. Many years ago, a couple in my church came to me to tell me that their son had recently come out to them as gay. And they asked me, what should they do? My reply was essentially, just love him. And they said that that's what they thought they should do, but they also wanted to check first. A couple of years later, they told me that their son and his partner uh, were adopting a baby and wondered what to do. And my answer was again, just love your grandchild. I later baptised that baby, and I know that those grandparents take such delight and joy in their little granddaughter. This couple had a choice, to embrace their son and his partner and their child, and to have them in their lives or to disapprove of them and to lose them. I think they chose the Christ-like option, and in doing so, their, their family life is enriched and enhanced. It was quite a journey for this couple to stretch their hearts to understand and to love their son in a new way. I'm so glad for them and their son that they did. 
There are many people who struggle greatly when their child or grandchild, brother or sister or friend comes out to them as gay. It's worth remembering that they are the same person they were the day before, except you know them better now. They're no longer hiding an important part of themselves from you. They're coming out to you as an act of trust, but it's often still a struggle. There are people who sometimes come out to their parents, but the parents say, don't tell grandma, it will break her heart. So whether or not somebody is willing to trust us with, uh, with their sexual identity or gender orientation will often come down to how much people perceive us to be open. If we give off a vibe of judgment and criticism, people will simply not trust us. They'll hold back and we will be the grandma whom the family keeps a secret from. I know that my father, if he was still alive, would have struggled with some of his great-grandchildren, my LGBT great-nephews and nieces. But we are the ones then who miss out on a relationship with someone whom we have in our family. So the comments we make about World Pride and other events in these coming weeks may be the signal to others around us that they, whether they can trust us or not. I gave a homily similar to this in a parish a few years back, and on that weekend, five parishioners came up to tell me about one of their children being gay. Each of them loved their children very much, but many of them felt they couldn't talk about it at church for fear of rejection and judgment of them as parents. And I was, I was so glad that these parents felt safe to tell me about such an intimate part of their story and their family life. But some of them still felt like they couldn't tell other people around them, so they remained isolated when in fact there were people around them, even sitting next to them in the same church, whom would have understood exactly. So Jesus commands us to love our enemies. And when we do that, they stop being our enemies and become our fellow human beings whom God loves. And if you are a person who identifies as a member of the LGBT community, and I want to say I'm so glad you are watching this video, or I'm so glad you are here in church with us. I want to say that I'm glad you're here today. You are nobody's enemy. You are welcome and you are loved. And for all of us, you know, which side of the bridge we may be on, perhaps there is a bridge we can build with respect to the people around us and foundations we can begin to dig right now.